watching the Jonathan Desvernay Gospel Channel. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Greater. I got a song. Lord, you are higher than any other. 
is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what can stand up? You say,
Come on, lift your hands. He's in the room. Mama Kotushka. Hand The Lord come to bring healing to his people. Yea, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Lift up your hands and receive it now. And let the river of God flow. We bind every agent of the enemy to stop the river of God. So today we declare, let the river flow. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. And refresh my soul. Sing it with me. Let the river flow. Come on, the river of God. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. And refresh. And refresh my soul. Come on, lift your hands and sing it. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. And refresh. And refresh my soul. Come on, put your hand on your neighbor and just say it. Let the river flow. Oh, yes, yes. Let the river flow. I just want you to pray for that neighbor that you're touching right now. You don't know what they stand in need of, but the river of God is in this room to heal, to deliver, and set free. Come on, come on, pray for your neighbor. Let the river flow, let the river flow, let the river flow. Yes, God, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yes, 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 yes. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Lift your hand and say, and now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Why? Because of what the Lord has Thank you for the river tonight, Lord. For us. For us, give thanks, give thanks. One more time, come on, everybody, say, give thanks, give thanks. Come on, put your hands together in anticipation of what God is going to do in this house. Oh, come on, He deserves much more than that. Give it to Him, He is worthy. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you for moving on in this house. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Let the saints give God some praise on tonight. Let the saints give God some praise tonight for the greatest church on this earth. Thank God for the greatest leader our presiding bishop Charles Edward Blake hallelujah let us stand we're gonna pay our cover charge the Lord say enter to my gates with thanksgiving and to my courts with praise as I often say just blow into your hand blow into your hand if you would the word said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
will now go into divine worship. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. O oh God, you are our God. This is that which thou, O oh Lord, hast said. Please notice the screen. O oh God, thou art holy. Before all the people, thou will be glorified. Everyone, O oh Lord, our God, send out thy light, thy truth. Let them lead us. Let them guide us to thy holy hill where we will reverently worship thee in the beauty of holiness. Fulfill your desire in our midst this day, O Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the elder Lawrence C. Blake, the apostolic adjutant of South Carolina, first jurisdiction. His prelate is Bishop J.L. Ely to come with the Old Testament reading followed by bishop marvin sanders auxiliary bishop of eastern missouri and western illinois jurisdiction where bishop lawrence m wooten yours truly is his prelate and then we'll have the celebratory praise with sin judah first the international worship they would come in that order reading the old testament scripture psalm 91 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. The word of the Lord is blessed. New Testament reading, St. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 17. It says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterous, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican stood afar off and would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. And when his disciples saw it, they rebuked him. 
But Jesus called them unto him, saying, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever will not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. The word of the Lord is blessed. James Hunt. <laughs> Praise God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. That's what holy convocation means for me. Coming out and exalting the Lord with the saints. Praising and magnifying God. And I thank God for an opportunity just to speak to the delegates and welcome you to St. Louis and to the 108th holy convocation of the Church of God in Christ Incorporated. Thank God for our Presiding Bishop, Bishop Charles Edward Blake, Sr., all of the general board members, first assistant presiding bishop, Bishop P.A. Brooks, Philip Aquila Brooks, and our second assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Jerry Wayne Macklin, and all of the general board members. Thank you all so much for just calling the meeting together and allowing the saints to come out and worship God. My encouragement to each and every one of you, forget about what you left at home, forget about all of the agendas and programs, all of the other materials, but come to the services and worship the Lord. God has something special with your name on it. And that's what I came to the 108th Holy Convocation for the Lord to bless me. For the Lord to shower down his blessings upon me. And I don't have any agenda or program. All I want is the blessings of the Lord. And the fellowship with the people of God in Christ. And I thank God for each and every one of you. And I want you to continue to pray my strength in the Lord. God bless you real good. presence of the Lord is in this room can you sense his presence come on lift up your hands one more time and let's honor his presence hallelujah to Jesus to take us to the next level as we prepare our hearts for the word of the Lord she is a nationally known artist with a signature voice and a four octave range who was born the youngest of six children in New Jersey Nancy is enthused about her ministry and music. And she is also fervent about her family. She and her husband Samuel have been married for nearly 13 years and are blessed with two sons. Diagnosed with heart failure during her first pregnancy, Nancy has witnessed God heal her heart physically and spiritually. Her passion for serving God and doing all he has called her to do is unwavering. She is an ordained and licensed minister who currently serves as director of creative arts ministry at Greater St. John MER in Elizabeth, New Jersey. She is a 21st century minstrel whose brave hearted mission in life now centers around ministry first than music. Please join me, Church of God in Christ, in giving a warm welcome to our musical guest, our psalmist for this evening, Minister Nancy Jackson Johnson. Come on, let's give it to her as she comes. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's celebrate God for this gift to the body of Christ. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
Can someone just give God some more praise? I feel his presence is so thick and rich in this room. God, we honor you. We give you glory. We thank you, Father, for your presence. It's truly, it is an honor to be here with you, to worship with you. Thank you so much, Dr. Judy, for having me give honor to Bishop Blake and to all the other bishops and ministers, pastors that are here. Anybody if want more of God? Just want more of God. Amen. Have you ever experienced when you've made up your mind to, to say, God, I want more, then here comes more distractions. Uh, can I get anybody to be real with me tonight? And I've experienced that in my life. It seems like the more work I have and the more th things come on my plate with ministry, with family, and it seems like sometimes I neglect to spend that time with the Lord that I should. And, and, and the Lord just prompted me one day and said, daughter, you're giving me everything else except for what I need from you. And he said, I, there's still some things I need to work out in your character. There's still some healing I need to do in your past. There's still some things that I need to restore in your walk. And I said, Father, here I am. I'm not just going to do work for the kingdom, but I'm going to worship the king of the kingdom. Anybody with me tonight? And this song is a simple reminder that says we need to stay in the presence of the Lord just a little bit longer and get rid of the distractions and those things that hinder us from seeking the face of God. Are there any more worshipers here tonight? Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. We want more of you, God. We want more of your presence, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Crying out for more. We're hungry for you. Anybody thirsty for God? Thank you, Jesus. That's what we say to you, God. What can I do for you? What can I bring to you? What kind of song would you like me to sing? All oh, did a dance for you. Pour out my love for you. What can I do for you, beautiful king? Because I can't thank you enough. Lord, because I can thank you enough so what can I do for you what can I bring to you what kind of song would you like me to sing oh damn worship pour out my love God what can I do for you my master God and King Lord I can't even thank you Anybody there? I can't thank you enough. But when I look back over my life and see how you kept me, God, I can't thank you enough. So what can I do? What can I bring? What kind of song would you like me to sing? All day I worship, pour out my love, God. What can I do for you, my daddy, God? You've been my portion, my exceeding great reward. Lord, I can't thank you enough. You brought me out when the enemy tried to destroy me. You stepped in and you prayed. Around 20 years ago, a dear friend, Brother Paul Morton, invited me to come. He informed me that the Lord had led him to form an organization from primarily Baptist churches of which he was a part, an organization that would emphasize holiness, that would emphasize the baptism in the Holy Ghost. I was so excited about that and willingly consented to do whatever I could to be of assistance and to be involved. I was invited to the first service of the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship the service in which Bishop Paul Morton was inaugurated and consecrated as the founding bishop of that organization. To allow me to preach on that day, I was able to participate in the elevation of this man to that high office. I'd known him since we were almost teenagers. We had fellowship with one another over the years. 
and it was a privilege to see my friend rise to such an exalted office. The Full Gospel Fellowship is one of the fantastic phenomena of the last three or two decades, and it has grown and developed to a very influential and significant role in the life of the church and has been such a blessing to Pentecostalism within the black community and within the Baptist church. And fast forward about 20 years later, Bishop Morton having served and raised up one of the most significant religious movements in our nation, decided that it was time for him to pass the leadership of the organization on to other hands that he would focus on the ministry of his local churches, that he would focus more on things having to do with his own ministry rather than the organization as a whole. And Bishop Walker succeeded him. And for that service, Bishop Morton again invited me to come and to share the word of the Lord and to celebrate his wonderful years of service and to be involved in the transition of leadership within that movement. He is uniquely anointed for the body of Christ with a clear and distinct voice for the 21st century, releasing into the atmosphere the truth of God's word, bringing about salvation, healing, deliverance, restoration for the continued upbuilding of God's kingdom. Bishop Paul S. Morton is a pastor's pastor, a leader's leader. He has the nurturing heart of an apostolic father with a mandate to change a generation by changing the way we do church. As I've said, he's the founding pastor of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship International. He's the senior pastor of Changing a Generation Full Gospel Church in Atlanta, Georgia, and co-pastor of the Greater St. Stephen Full Gospel Church in New Orleans. Both of these are mega churches. One church in two states with four locations. He's a gifted author, an anointed singer with six stellar awards. He holds multiple advanced degrees in theology and divinity. Bishop and his wife, Dr. Deborah Morton, are the proud parents of three children and the grandparents of six beautiful grandchildren. It is my privilege, my joy to present the man of God, to share the word of God, a dear friend, one who I admire and respect very highly. And I praise God for the impact of his ministry on the world. May we stand and with rousing applause receive Bishop Paul Morton. Well, I just need somebody to give God the praise in this place. If you know God's been good to you, if you really know that he's been good to you, praise him like you know he's been good. Oh my. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is so good to be here tonight. We greet you in divine love just to let you know that Jesus is still the answer. For the world today he's supplying needs he's making ways and all you have to do is cast your cares upon him because he really 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 cares i am just so honored to be here could i just say it's just good to be home it's just good to be home i tell you this is where i grew up of course i wasn't on this kind of stage they let me sing every now and then at the late night service but i thank god god has been so good and so faithful to know my roots and where God has brought me from never will forget it of course my father was at the first one 108 years ago and uh, to see that the church of God in Christ is just going strong growing 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 and I thank God for you I think that you know it if you don't know it I love our presiding Bishop Bishop Charles Blake oh God Yes. 
he has been an inspiration in my life for so many years, so, so many years, even before I pastored in, in the Church of God in Christ, and before I started pastoring, I said, that's the kind of pastor I want to be. Boy, I like Bishop Blake. And to see how God has blessed him. Yes, he preached my consecration service as bishop and, of course, my retirement service. And I told him, don't get no ideas. I've been presiding bishop longer than you now. You got to know that. Yeah, you just, I've been in presiding bishop longer than you. Yes, indeed. But I thank God for you. You are just faithful and dedicated. And, of course, what can I say about Bishop Brooks, who I grew up with. Thank God for you, Bishop. Bishop Macklin, I thank God for you. These presiding bishops that work along with our presiding bishops, the general board. I thank God for you, all of you, Mother Rivers. We appreciate you, Lady Blake. It's just good to be here, and I'm certainly glad for those that have come along with us. Uh, it's our Pastors and Ministry Workers Conference this week for the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship with our new presiding bishop, Bishop Joseph W. Walker. Um, but I thank God that our state bishop here in Missouri is with us. Thank God for Bishop Courtney Jones. I appreciate you so much. Bishop George White is here, Missouri. We appreciate you and thank God for you. And of course, he came with me. He flew in all the way from Baltimore. My first assistant, Bishop Oscar Brown, is with me. So I appreciate him so much and others that have come along with us. But we're here tonight to praise the name of the Lord. And of course, we brought some product with us and I'm not going to go into depth in it but I thank God Abin, uh, Abnington uh, Publishing Company asked me if I would do my life story they said you need to do your life story people need to hear your story because sometimes people they see the finished product but they don't know what you had to go through to get to where you are and so I thank God that I was able to write my life story. And of course, Church of God and Christ is in this story because it's in, it's in my roots. And this will just literally bless you. I promise you it will. We have some singing tapes, some preaching tapes. What I love, I think, the most is my prayer CD. God took me right into the throne room and I did 11 different prayers. It's called The Sounds of Change. And it deals with spiritual warfare. The spirit is in competition with the mind. The mind is in competition with the spirit. We deal with spiritual warfare. We pray for the family. Many families that have never prayed together put this CD on and said, we know how to pray together because we're praying with you. There's a prayer on here for financial breakthrough. I just believe the day has come. You just, just don't go together. Just don't go together speaking in tongues one minute and can I borrow a dollar? Just don't go together. It don't go together. I just believe we're supposed to be blessed. We are supposed to be blessed. And so it's about a financial breakthrough. And that's what God wants to do in our lives. And then, of course, uh, there's a prayer on here for healing. And I really went in on that one because in 2006, God healed me of cancer. And I'm still cancer free. So I know God is able to do it. We give him the glory. We give him the praise. I believe tonight somebody has come. To receive what God has for you and as you send up I'm here to tell you God will send down because he is in the blessing business mother Patterson he is in the blessing business right now so rise from your rest Lord I want you to be blessed by our praise as we glory 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 in your your embrace and your presence now You know what you can help me say it. Oh, the glory of your presence. We 
we your temple we your temple give you reverence next few moments use me as your instrument lives will be changed people will be delivered it is already done in the mighty matchless name of Jesus we pray amen 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 well are you ready for the Word of God I tell you this is such an honor for me tonight I was back a few years ago I would tell the media ministry don't y'all break this tape this is I gotta I gotta have this tape yeah preaching at the convocation this is a blessing Bishop Ellis this is a blessing we are going to the gospel according to Matthew the 28th or the 14th chapter and I'm going to focus in on verse 28 Matthew the 14th chapter verse 28 before we read we make a confession in our ministry on how we receive the Word of God I think that instructions need to be given not form and fashion but instructions on how to receive the Word of God I fly several times a week but every time I get on the airplane they give me instructions on how to fly and I think we need instructions on how to receive the Word of God because the letter killeth but the Spirit giveth life. Do you realize that my educated mind can kill this Word? I got to place the Spirit over my mind. So tonight I am here to tell you we got to believe God's Word. I am proud to be a kingdom representative. I don't make no bones about it. I represent the kingdom, thy kingdom come. I know my assignment, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this Bible is our kingdom constitution that supersedes the U.S. Constitution. Now, U.S. Constitution, if you line up with this, you got me. If you don't, I'm sticking to the kingdom. Constitution. So I need you to stand for a moment. Lift your Bibles, your iPads, your iPhones. If you don't have any of those, just place your hand over your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And repeat after me, if you will, if I receive this word with my mind only, this word will be dead for me. But if I receive this word, this kingdom constitution with the spirit with the spirit over my mind over my emotions over my fleshly desires this word will be life for me Lord I don't need religious form and fashion I need life look at somebody and tell them receive life you may be seated in the presence of the Lord Jesus has come 
that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Matthew 14 and 28, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. I want to talk just for a few moments tonight about dealing with impossibilities. Dealing with impossibilities. Of course, it's perception and perception unchallenged becomes reality. Because we really know as we deal with impossibilities, it's not really impossible because all things are possible with him, if you can just believe. But I love this particular story because the one thing that holds my attention and grips my heart in this amazing, amazing story is the figure of Jesus walking on the water in this storm. Now what Jesus is doing here, Jesus is challenging us to rise with him to another and higher type of life than we normally live. What he's trying to tell us, and this is important, maximize your potential. Maximize that unexposed ability. There's something inside of you, that untapped strength. Things that seem to be impossible. He said, what I need you to do, I need you to rise with me to this level, to realize you're not just average. You got to watch people, you know, you just start saying what other people say, but you just can't say what other people say. I'm just so glad I'm just an average kind of person. I'm just kind of average kind of person. Do you know what average means? Average means being on top of the bottom. Now, why are you going around bragging? I'm so glad I'm on top of the bottom. I'm so glad I'm on top of the bottom. No, you are on top of the top because greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. So Jesus became what we are so that we could become what he is. So that's why tonight I wanted to look at this, this raging storm, this, this interesting story, because as we look at this raging storm, the disciples are there, but the only authority that they have over this storm is a voice of fear. Now that's dangerous because the devil can smell fear. And the devil knows and he will come after you and will attack you because if he knows and he understands that God did not give you fear, he comes and he attacks because God has not given to us the spirit of fear. He's given to us power. He's given to us love. He's given to us a sound mind. So he will attack you because he can felt you can act like you're so strong, but the devil can smell fear. Just like somebody trying to be all strong around a big dog that comes barking at you. That dog can smell fear if you, if you got authority over the dog or if the dog's got authority over you. You know, here come the dog, bark, woo, 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 and, and, and you talk, you better get away from me, dog. You better, I ain't scared of you. Better, you backing up all the time. No, dog knows I'm coming at you because I know you're scared. Listen, people of God, look at this particular story for nine hours. They battle with this storm. Nine hours. Now, it's about four o'clock in the morning. 
it's still dark. The storm is still raging. Their muscles now are sore. They're weak. They're tired. And I can see the disciples as they begin to look at each other and say, if only the master was here. He would know how to handle this storm if only Jesus was here. He could handle this storm. And the reason why they were saying that because they knew that he had handled other storms in the past. They were out on the raging sea and the billows were tossing high. And here these disciples are on the boat, but Jesus is in the hall of the ship and he's fast asleep in the hall of the ship. The disciples are on top, but they're scared and they look at each other like little boys. Talking about, Somebody better go wake him up. Somebody better, I ain't gonna wake him up. Oh no, I ain't gonna wake up. Somebody better wake him up. So they go down and they wake Jesus up and they say, Master, I don't even know how you could sleep through all of this. The tempest is raging. The billows are tossing high. We are about to lose our lives. I could see Jesus getting up and wiping his eyes and looking at his disciples and probably saying, mm -mm -mm, this is just a shame. How long are y'all going to be with me and be this fearful? Don't you know that I'm Jesus with my eyes open but I'm still Jesus with my eyes closed in fact he really got upset with the storm I could hear him speaking to the storm now you know better storm you know I got some scaredy cat disciples why would you mess with them and you know I'm trying to sleep why would you let a storm come right now when I'm trying to sleep and that's when he spoke to the storm and says storm shut up I gotta get me some sleep peace be peace be still and so these disciples are talking about if only Jesus was here where is he then all of a sudden there's a walker on the water a walker on the water and the Bible said that they saw something out there on the water and they thought it was a ghost and they were afraid now I want you to listen to this because this is important because a whole lot of people are involved in form and fashion listen to what they're saying now if only Jesus was here he knows how to handle this storm if only Jesus was here they see a walker on the water and they're afraid if only Jesus was here they see a walker on the water and they're afraid if only Jesus was here they see a walker on the water and they are afraid it sounds like some of us oh we know how to pray Lord I need you right now come on right now come on right now right now right now and when he shows up you get afraid I got some news for you people of God when I call him I don't care if he's got to walk on the water I don't care what he has to do I know any way you bless me it's all right with me ah people of God you got to understand this because he will show up he will show up that's why Jesus had to speak to them quickly because they were about to jump out of that boat and Jesus said be of good cheer he couldn't even call his name he just said be of good cheer be not afraid now it's still dark the storm is raging Bishop Sheard it's, it, it's, it's raging they really can't see but when Jesus said that he didn't call his name but be of good cheer don't be afraid it was Peter who said Is that you? I know, I know that voice. I, I, I know it's dark out there, but I, 
I know that voice. And right here, I'm going to put a pen there so that you can understand because the only way you can recognize that voice in a storm, you need to get familiar with the voice before the storm. Because if you get familiar with him before the storm, when the storm comes, I know that's you, Jesus. I know that's you. He's coming to your rescue and he will supply all your needs. Listen, people of God. Listen, people of God. That's when Peter said, Jesus, if that's you, bid me come. And I'll walk on the water. These were welcome words, Bishop Wells. These were welcome words because Peter believed that impossibilities could be transmitted into possibilities. Somebody said, you really don't even test the resources of God until you try the impossible. God is saying, give me something hard. Come on, you, you ain't even testing my resources. Apparently, you don't know I can make a way out of no way. I can, I can put a door where there is no door. You don't even test the resources of God until you try the impossible because he specializes. I may have some witnesses here. I, I know it may be the first night, but I may have some witnesses here. You know that he's the, he's the one that will supply your every need. Charles Persian said, one man says, I will do as much as I can. I will do as much as I can. But the response came back, as much as you can. Anybody can do that he who believes in Jesus Christ does what you cannot do oh God get us to the level where we get back to the place where we trust you and we believe you and know that you can make a way out of no way you see when Paul looked at the gigantic tasks around him he said who is sufficient to handle these things this is a lot this is a lot Lord I'm looking at all of the circumstances around me I'm looking at all the trouble around me who is sufficient to handle these things but when he looked away from the things and he looked to Jesus who gives us power he answered and said I can do all things is there anybody here you got the power in Jesus to realize that if you trust him tonight some way somehow I don't care what you're dealing with in your life he is able to see you through Jesus wants us to have great faith in him Dr. Martin Luther King made many great speeches, but one of the greatest ones he made, he said, it doesn't matter now. Yeah, yeah, but Dr. King, they're they trying to destroy you. It doesn't matter now. You, you don't know the kind of experience I had with God. They, well, I, I mean, they're they going to burn down your house. It doesn't matter now. When you get to that level, where you are so sold out to God that you're able to say it doesn't matter now. Yeah, if you don't want to follow the word of God, it doesn't matter. You, you, you ain't got to stay under my teaching. It doesn't matter now if you don't want the word because I'm going to give you the word. We got to be able to speak into the lives of people. I know my assignment. And could I tell you the kind of faith that God wants in this 108th holy convocation? He wants reckless faith. <clears throat> what are you talking about, Bishop? He 
wants reckless faith. Reckless faith is the opposite of careful faith. Too many of us, we got the kind of faith, oh, when everything is going bad, oh, thank you, Lord, you're being good to me. But just as soon as some trouble comes, you tiptoe through the tulips, being careful, wondering if that was really God. We need some people with reckless faith where you can't always see your way, but you're going to trust them anyhow. I, I, I'm not talking about somebody, even when God tells you to give, you tell me, oh, that, that may be my emotions. I better sit on down. If God said it, do it. If God tells you to do it, I don't care how crazy it looks. Do it because God said do it. And if you do it because God said do it, he will make a way somehow. A reckless driver can be in such a bad situation. A reckless driver can be in such a bad situation that he or she will take their hands off the steering wheel, cover their eyes, because they don't want to see what's going to happen. I don't know where I'm going to land, but I can't look. I can't look. I trust the car. You got to do it because I can't see it. I'm just praying the day will come that we would get our hands off the steering wheel and let God drive. Because God knows how to handle it. All you got to do is put your hands over your eyes and say, Lord, I'm just going to believe. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's about to happen. But I know that you're going to make a way somehow. I ain't got to see my way. As long as you're in charge, I dare you just put your hands over your eyes. Just say, Lord, I trust you, Lord. Lord, I trust you. I know that you can fix it. I know that you can make a way out. Lord, I trust you. Listen, people of God, look at the woman with the issue of blood for 12 long years. That was reckless faith. 12 years she'd been suffering, but she heard Jesus was in town. She made up in her mind, I got to go to the meeting. I have to see Jesus. But can't you see the crowd is so huge. By the time she gets up close, to the podium, can't you see one of the disciples coming up saying, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Jesus has been ministering all day long. He's tired, we're gonna have to get him in. I'm gonna ask you to please cooperate with us. The disciples are going to help me in this area. We're gonna take Jesus down the middle aisle we have one request, nobody touch him. He's prayed for everybody that he could today. Just one request, follow the rules, don't touch him. Well, you know church folk, I could see them walking around, oh, he ain't all of that, he could have prayed for, I came all this way, he could have prayed for me. Walking away mad, but not this woman. She heard what the disciples said, but what she said, I, I, I don't need him to lay hands on me. I, I don't need him to anoint me with oil, but if I could just, I dare you to look at somebody, tell them reckless faith. Re reckless faith will make you break the rules. Reckless faith will say, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Sit down a moment, sit down a moment. Reckless faith. Reckless. Reckless faith. Reckless faith is the kind of faith, the kind of faith that the sick man had when they took him 
to see Jesus. Yes, sir. Same kind of situation. This man is so sick. His employees have to carry him on his bed. But he gets to the house yes, where Jesus is yes, sir. and it's crowded. Yes, sir. You can't get in the house. You can't get in the doorway. And so his employers, I'm sure, are so devoted to him, I'm sure they keep pushing the bed up, trying to get as close as they can can and I could hear them say if you please just let us through just let us through this man is real sick he really needs to see Jesus could you just please move over and let 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 this man come through and you know how church folk are who we sick too who you think he is he ain't the only one sick better wait in line like everybody else so the man Bishop Sheard couldn't get through the front door. So I could hear the employee say, well, we're, 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 we're boss, we tried. Maybe he's coming through in another few months and maybe he'll pray for you then. But I could hear the man say, oh, no, no, I'm going to see him today. Some way, somehow, I'm going to see him today. And I could hear the man say, here's what I need you to do. Take me up to the roof. Now, 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 come on, boss. Come on, boss. Now, that's, that's reckless. Now, you know this ain't your house. We can't go up on this man's roof. I know you want to see Jesus, but let's go home. Let's not embarrass ourselves. We don't want nobody to arrest us. I don't care what you say. I need to see Jesus take me up to the roof. They take him up to the roof because they have to obey him. And they get up on the roof. Usually in the day, that day, you could see down into the rooms. But in this particular building, you couldn't see down into the room. And I could hear his employees say, now look at us. Now we're all embarrassed. We got to go back through the crowd. They're going to be laughing at us. <laughs> Y'all went up there and still didn't see him. <laughs> so, but I could hear this man say, oh no. I'm going to see him. Do you know what this man with this reckless faith did? He said, tear the roof off. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? I'm here to tell you people of God when you really want something from God. Tear the roof off. You're going to have to do something crazy that, that people ain't used to seeing you do. But i got to see Jesus so Bad. I ain't gonna let you go not until you bless my soul I dare you to look at somebody tell them tear the roof off I'm almost finished Peter said bid me come Jesus is that you? I know that's you, Jesus. If you tell me to get out of this boat and walk on that water, Jesus, I will get out of this boat and walk on the water just like you. Now, can't you imagine the disciples in the boat with Peter. You know again how church folk are. Here's a man that wants to trust Jesus, but you know how some church folk are. Peter, you better sit yourself down now. You know you ain't Jesus. You got a zeal and it ain't according to knowledge now. Don't be crazy now. Just sit yourself on down. There ain't no Holy Ghost. <laughs> but I could hear Peter say, y'all shut up. I I'm going to walk on this water if Jesus tells me to come. And I could hear Jesus say, all right, you got that kind of faith. You got that kind of faith. I 
am going to tell you to come. But let me tell you, God's getting ready to do some amazing things in your life. Hear me, Kojic. Hear me, Church of God in Christ. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has in store for you. I come to speak it in your life tonight that God is about to do it for your life. And I just believe that there's some water walkers in this place this night. You have come to the house of the Lord and you ain't afraid to get out of the boat. You're not afraid to get the blessings that God has for you and deal with your impossibilities. But I got to give you one key. If you're going to get out of the boat, this is one thing you're going to have to do. And Peter had to do it. You're going to have to do it. Get away from negative folk. Negative folk will keep you in the boat. Presiding Bishop, I get so sick of people hanging around me with boat mentality. You got to know how to get out of your comfort zone. And you got to know how to trust God. If God is God, he said, I'm going to supply your every need. I'm going to make a way out of no way. I dare you to touch somebody. Tell them, get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. Get out. I don't care if you got negative folk around you. Tell them, I don't need to hear you now. I'm hearing what God is saying to me right now. Get out of the boat. Jesus. That's you. Bid me come. Peter starts walking on the water. And I know there were some people say, oh, ha, ha, he went down, but, but at least he started walking. Right, right, right. Ain't none of them did no walking. Right, right, right. At least he started walking, but he, he made one mistake and if you're going to be a water walker don't make this mistake because he started walking on the water and can't you see him as he looks back at the boat and looks at the disciples and say y'all see me thought i couldn't do it huh look at me i'm walking on the water and i can hear jesus say oh you're doing that you're doing that well let me just back off and you go ahead and walk on the water you know what happened peter went Ah, but thank God he had enough sense. He had enough spirituality to say, Lord, save me. I don't care how much talent you have. I don't care how gifted you are. You got to know God is the only one who's able to save you. I feel like preaching in this place. Stop by to tell you, this is a new season. In church of God in Christ, you better get ready because God is raising up a nation that's going to be water walkers. I don't know how you feel about it. I made up in my mind. I don't want to get out there on the eagle, but Jesus, if you tell me to walk on the water. I will walk on the water. I think I got some witnesses here. Because when you get out of the boat, the devil in hell can't block you. The devil in hell can't stop you. Now how many of you know that the devil even comes a holy convocation I, I, the, not just the holy ghost but the devil comes to holy convocation but since the devil is in the house tonight i just think we need to make him nervous i think we need to have a rehearsal because before any great event there's got to be a rehearsal dr judy McAllister didn't just get up there tonight they prepared for the big event i just want to prepare some water walkers 
Shatata Shandera Bok. Some water workers that are about to get out of the boat and walk on the water. You're about to make the devil mad right now. I know. We're just symbolizing it. This ain't for everybody. This is just for water walkers. I need you wherever you are. Get out of your area wherever you are. Get out of your area and take three steps and just walk, walk, walk. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Won't God make a way somehow? If somebody's still looking at you like you're crazy, just touch them. Say, get out of the boat. Get out. Get out of the boat. I ain't got to wait till official Sunday to get out of the boat. But Tuesday night, I'm out. Woo! I'm out. Now don't wait. I need to see my musician. Don't wait till the battle is over. I need somebody. Shout now. Shout now. Is there anybody? That's it, John. Is there anybody? You know God will make a way somehow yes if somebody wants to know how i became a crazy water walker can i just tell you the truth i learned it right here in the church of god in christ because my daddy taught me ain't gonna be no boat mentality folk up in this house and i'm so glad I got out of the boat and I'm here to tell you prophet won't God make a way yeah he will yeah he will yeah he will I feel the presence of God in this place. You gotta have. You gotta have reckless faith. When I was growing up, I came under folk who had reckless faith. People come up on crutches and in wheelchairs. And say, Get out of that chair. Reckless faith. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, look at somebody say, Don't do it without me. I need some worship. I need some worship. I need some worship. Lord. Whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Don't do it. Without me, Lord, whatever you're doing in this scene, please.
without me. Don't do it without me. Now come on, help me say it, y'all. Desvernay Gospel Channel. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.